In this question, we have to determine the least magnitude of the normal force on the rafter from each thumb or opposite finger. So in order to do that, we're going to zoom in on the hands of this stuntman and take a look at the forces that are acting on his thumb and opposite finger. And so here is an attempted drawing at the grip that the stuntman has on the rafters. What we'll do is we'll look at just this thumb right here, and we'll try to determine the forces that are acting on it. Now, of course, we know that the gravitational force is pulling down, but what's a little bit tricky is that because there are four points of contact, we have one here, a second, third, and fourth one there, we're going to actually take the gravitational force and divide it by four. And remember, that's because we're only looking at the forces acting on this one thumb. So that thumb is not supporting the entire weight of the stuntman, but rather just one-fourth of the weight. Again, because there are four points of contact between the stuntman and the two rafters. So instead of saying mg, we're basically just going to say one-fourth of mg. And then we continue on and we have the friction that is actually acting here to kind of hold the stuntman up. This is static friction because the stuntman's fingers are not sliding against the rafters, so we'll call this F sub S. And then we have the rafter pushing up against the thumb. This is actually the normal force. That's what we're trying to figure out. And then we have the muscles of the thumb kind of pulling the thumb in this direction to cancel out that normal force. And we can just call this the force exerted by the muscles inside the thumb. Now, how do we do this? Well, we turn next to Newton's second law, and in particular, we're going to sum the forces in the y direction and set that equal to the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. We'll call the upward direction positive and the downward negative. And so if we look at the two forces in the y direction, we have positive frictional force minus one-fourth times mass times g, and then this is equal to the mass of the stuntman multiplied by the acceleration. Now the acceleration is actually going to be zero. By the way, technically we'd have to put one fourth of the mass here as well, because again, we're only supporting one fourth of the mass with that thumb, but it doesn't matter because we are multiplying the right hand side by zero with that zero acceleration. So we'll have zero there. And then what we can do is actually solve for this static frictional force. We can add the one fourth mg to the other side, and then we're just gonna plug in the known values. Now the mass was given as 79 kilograms, so we'll plug that in. And then of course g is 9.8 meters per second squared. We punch this into our calculators, we get a static frictional force of 193.55 newtons. Now we haven't found the normal force yet, but that's no problem because we know that the static frictional force is equal to the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force that is exerted on that thumb. So all we need to do is divide both sides of this by mu sub s, we have an expression for that normal forces, which is what we're trying to calculate. We have that static frictional force calculated from earlier, and then mu sub s was given in the question as 0.7. That's the coefficient of static friction. We put that into our calculator, and we can see that the final answer to this question is about 277 newtons. That is the normal force that is exerted on the thumb, as well as on the opposite finger of the stuntman's hand. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. But of course, please do not feel obligated to do so.